This episode of Big Guy Builds is an installment in our workspace makeover series. This corner of our garage has a number of issues, not the least of which is a step that is too shallow and slightly unstable. Although this project doesn't directly impact our woodworking activities, it will make the space safer and just a pinch more enjoyable to use. To accomplish this, we're going to utilize some deck building techniques to create a landing and a couple of wide steps leading down to the garage floor. First, we need to deal with this piece of hardware floor that extends past the wall. As is, it'll be difficult to get our landing flush to the wall with this protrusion in the way. Plan A is to carefully remove that piece of flooring, trim it down so it sits flush to the wall, then reinstall it. In order to remove that piece of flooring, we first have to remove the trim from around the door to give us totally unencumbered access to the flooring. We intend to reinstall this trim as well, so we need to be very careful when prying it away. The trim comes off nice and clean and will be easily reused. Unfortunately, the flooring was not as cooperative. It split during the removal process, so we'll need to go to plan B. We keep a small stash of oak hardwood flooring for occasions such as this. As luck would have it, we had a piece that was the correct length and almost the correct width to sit flush to the wall. We took the tongue off of this scrap piece of flooring with a few swipes of a plane. Then we did some pre-sanding to the surface before installing it. We'll come back later and apply finish so it matches the rest of the floor. It's easily nailed in place and now we're ready to start on the deck. Our first step is to secure 2x6s around the perimeter of the landing. We want the height of the landing to match the height of the floor in the house so there's no trip hazard here. We use a scrap piece of the deck floor to help us position the height of the first rim joist. Once things are flush with the house floor and level, we drive screws through the deck's rim joist, through the drywall, and into the house's rim joist. This makes for a solid, secure connection. Now we can reference this first rim joist to place the second. The second rim joist needs to fit between two walls, so we'll cut it a pinch long and trim a little off the end to sneak up on a nice tight fit. It took us four or five tries, but in the end it fit perfectly. Again, this rim joist is secured to the house's rim joist with screws. The third rim joist is a little more tricky. One end can be secured to the house's rim joist like the first two, but the end of it will be hanging in free space. However, this is easily dealt with. We line up the third rim joist to the second and make sure it's level. To support the end that is not in contact with the house, we'll temporarily clamp it to a 2x4. The final rim joist is fairly straightforward. Screw one end into the first rim joist, then drive screws through joist number three into the end of joist number four. Next, we'll replace the temporary vertical support with a double up 2x4 post. With rim joists three and four level, we place a 2x4 in the corner where they meet Describe a line across the top of the rim joist. We'll then cut two boards to this length and glue and screw them together. A few screws through the joist and into our new post and everything is fully supported. The perimeter of our landing is complete. It's solidly supported and attached to the structure of the house. We've been very careful to keep everything nice and level along the way so our deck will not slope or tilt. Next, we'll add two joists inside the perimeter. With a deck this small, these aren't strictly necessary but we're going to overbuild this thing a little. We start by measuring and marking where we want our joists to go. Then we screw joist hangers in these locations. Once our joists are cut to length, we can drop them in the hangers and screw the hangers to the joists. And yes, these are special joist hanger screws. Our joists sat a little proud of the rim joists, but once again, our plane comes to the rescue to level everything out. Time to install the deck itself. This is fairly straightforward. We cut a number of 1x6s to length, leaving a half inch overhang for aesthetic purposes. It's now simply a matter of driving screws through each deck board and into the joists below. We will need to notch one of these boards to fit around the bumped out wall. The remaining deck boards are cut to fit between the walls. The final deck board also needed a little bit of finessing of its width. And just like that, we have a deck, which turned out nice and flush with the house floor. Now it's time to add a step to ease the transition from the deck down to the garage floor. We plan to put a step on both sides of the deck that extend into the garage. We'll start with the shorter side. We measure and cut two long pieces that will run the width of the deck here. Then we'll cut a few shorter pieces. Now these short pieces will be the same length for both steps, so we'll set a stop on our chop saw and bash them out in no time. Then we screw everything together to form a ladder frame. Now we can attach this frame to the deck structure. We'll clamp and hold it in place while we make sure it's the correct height and is level. Then we'll drive screws through the frame and into the deck supports. We add some vertical supports to the front of the frame using the same technique we used to support the deck. Rinse and repeat this process for the other side of the deck. Now to add stair treads. 
We'll sandwich a 2x4 between two 2x6s giving us a nice broad step. We have a lot of big feet in our family, so this will lend comfort and safety to the stairs. And with that, the landing is complete and another workspace improvement project is in the books. While this one doesn't directly contribute to our woodworking workflow, it was a necessary improvement. We have had people take a fall when descending on the old rickety step, so if nothing else, this new landing will allow us to spend more money on tools and less on doctor bills and attorney fees. We have several more great workspace improvement projects on deck for you, so be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. We hope you enjoyed this type of project. Please let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Until next time, I'm John Hobbs for Big Guy Builds.